So a few years ago, a teacher in his 50s lost about 56 pounds eating only McDonald's. So let me explain. After seeing this documentary, Super Size Me, a teacher in Iowa decided to plan an experiment with his students and eat only McAdee's for about several months. He literally only ate outside of McDonald's one time within several months when he was stuck at an airport. And even then, his cheat meal away from McDonald's, away from his McDonald's diet, consisted of cashews, Diet Coke, and some other packaged snack. He lost lots of weight and inches off of his waist, his hips, and he also had a significant decrease in his cholesterol. Now, this is not too surprising if you understand one huge underlying principle. The biggest takeaway, especially for individuals searching for a specific magical diet for weight loss is the majority of diets work due to controlling energy balance which is based on the law of thermodynamics. So imagine a seesaw. On one side you have 2,000 calories and on the other side you have about an equal amount of 2,000 calories. For the most part, imagine a mixture of different types of foods from vegetables to legumes to fish to lean proteins representing one side of that equation and hamburgers, french fries, and hot dogs on the other. The calories are even, the seesaw is even. Here your weight is equal, it's about the same. Now imagine say you have taken away some food or even kept the same amount of food and added in 45 minutes of exercise. Now the seesaw has essentially tipped. It favors one side over the other and the chances of weight loss have significantly increased until the seesaw is stuck into place. This is when weight loss stays stagnant or it slows down the amount of calories. Now to lose more weight, you'll have to take off more calories through decreasing food or increasing energy expenditure through exercise to lose more weight. Now, one important note is that weight loss is rarely, if ever, going to be linear. And what I mean is it's completely normal to see fluctuations from day to day. The seesaw will go up and down, up and down, and you'll probably go crazy. You could jump from 150 to 148 to 156 to 150, back down to 146. However, if you assess the overall trend of your weight loss throughout the week, it will continue down and over time you'll be able to see an entire trend of weight loss that will occur. So now going back to our guy, while he did choose McDonald's, his quantity of food, the amount of food that he did have uh, was capped at 2,000 calories per day. He even chose the recommended dietary allowance of proteins, carbs, and fats. Furthermore, he did pick up a walking regimen of 45 minutes a day to add on to his caloric deficit. But still, I mean, he lost 50 pounds eating fast food, so what gives? Now, I don't know how much he's lost now or what happened in the end of his diet. You know, a significant amount of weight was still lost and in inches off his waist plus improved health lowered his cholesterol through McDonald's. So now this decrease in cholesterol may just be due to him initially being overweight and now getting into a healthier range, but still. Here's the key takeaway. The principle of controlling energy balance is so important for you to lose weight. While there are definitely other factors at play in weight loss, especially when talking about optimizing your body composition, your health, and your performance, this demonstrates how the majority of diets really work. Successful weight loss is typically going to be grounded in negative energy balance. Now, how can you ensure that you are actually controlling your energy balance for weight loss? One solution you may already have thought of is to track your calories to count your calories each day and to make sure that you are at a deficit. So say if you're at 2,000 to have 1,750, 1,500 each day, or to have the same amount of food and to exercise, you can do this through popular apps 
such as MyFitnessPal or Calorie Counter and Fat Secret. However, counting calories is not necessarily uh, needed to lose weight. Mind you, people long before apps and before um, any sort of calorie counting were following um, diets and losing weight. So you don't necessarily have to track your calories. It might be a little bit more efficient, effective, and more convenient for you, but um, you don't necessarily have to do it. A combination of portion control and eating foods with high nutrient density um, is going to be very beneficial among other habits that you can use to make sure that you lose weight. And I'll discuss those a little bit more in other videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check the links below, comment, please leave any questions if you have them, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.